This program is produced by listener-supported KFUO Radio. Your support during KFUO share is vital to the continuation of great programs like this one. If you appreciate this program, please consider what you can give to support the ongoing ministry of KFUO Radio and this program. You can make a gift sending a text to the number 41444. Enter KFUO as the message. You'll get a text right back that walks you through the steps on your phone and it takes just a minute or two. You can also visit KFUO.org and click on the donate button or give Mary a call at 314-996-1518. Thanks for listening and supporting KFUO Radio. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Good morning, it's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 49. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened, and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a Tuesday that feels like a Monday. I know some of you maybe took Monday off. I didn't. But Tuesday still feels like Monday. Today just feels off. And that's because we have a terrible habit in in this country, perhaps in, in fact all the world, we forget about Jesus so quickly. Leading up to Christmas, which in the marketing world starts, what, after September 15th or 16th, right? The carols turn on the radio, and it's just Christmas 24-7 until what? Until Christmas. The day after Christmas, no more carols on the road. Nothing on the radio. You have to get back to reality. The same thing happens with Easter. Unfortunately, we don't have quite as many Easter hymns that are so popular in culture, so you don't have Easter hymns on the radio. But it leads up right there, 40 days of Lent, preparation, anticipation, Holy Week, Easter Sunday, and then back to reality, back on Monday. And we forget that things are different, wonderfully different. But I think the reason is that the world has beat us down. It continues to assault us, betray us, to to put these temptations and then take them away. 
we become abused by this fallen world, by our brothers and sisters, other human beings that disappoint us, that fall short of what we would expect. We become people waiting for the other shoe to drop. How much like the disciples. Just now have come these two men that had been traveling to Emmaus to say, We have seen the Lord. He's appeared to Peter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And then they have to sit and talk about it. It's just like a church council meeting, right? As they were talking about these things, did he really rise? Is he really there? Poof. Jesus appears. Miraculously. As quickly as he disappeared from the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, the ones who you remember said, Oh, it's late. We shouldn't be going anymore. Stay with us. It's toward evening. The day is far spent. He breaks the bread and their eyes are open to see it as he, and he's gone. It doesn't matter that it's so late anymore. This is wonderful news. And they rush to tell everyone else. Coming back to Jerusalem, they tell them this good news. And everyone sits there waiting for that other shoe to drop. In the midst of that doubt, of that uncertainty, of that hope against hope, because you don't want to be disappointed. Jesus is there. We know that he is always with us. His promise has been to be with us to the end of the age. But sometimes our eyes fail to see. Even in the midst of this unbelief, this this disbelief for, for joy. He comes to them with the thing they need most. His word that creates, that sustains, that drives us in this new reality. Peace to you. Not the world's peace. Not freedom from this wondering, this other shoe dropping. Release from that tension. Release from that sadness, from that disappointment. The peace that is beyond all understanding. And in speaking it, it is so. In the midst of our daily struggles, of our daily disappointments, because we yet live this side of glory in a world still beset by sin, Struggling still with a flesh that is infected with sin. Jesus asks, why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your heart? To which I would say, and I think you might join me, it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe because we live in this world so often. Sunday disappears, it's Monday, it's back to reality with proof, with empirical evidence, with a world that says, did Jesus really live? No one rises from the dead. That just doesn't happen. Where's your proof? Well, Jews seek after signs. And Greeks seek after wisdom. And what is it that we seek? Christ and Him crucified. And we believe. We believe against unbelief. Because this news is so much better than we could have expected. Jesus lives. The victory's won. Death has no more hold on you and I. For we are now new. And though our hearts may disbelieve for joy, we may marvel. Jesus proves to us again and again that it is He, truly He, the God made man, 
a man who is God, bearing forever the stigmata, the marks of his passion, the marks of our redemption, of the forgiveness we have in his name. And he comes to us in simple means. A word, a sacrament, proving to them, yes, again, that it is truly he, not just a vision, not a specter, with a very Midwestern folksy way to say, it's really me, guys. Do you have anything to eat? And he eats. It is truly him, truly risen. Disbelieving for joy and marveling, the Lord now gives them and equips them as he has the church and each of us, his holy word. It is necessary that all these things be done. Necessary because it was prophesied and God is not a liar. He does what he says. He says what he does. We can take him at his word. There's no other shoe. You have forgiveness in his name. And what a joy. Don't let Monday come or Tuesday or reality steal from you this new and amazing promise. This new reality. Rise up quickly. So what if the day is late and far spent? Go and tell your brothers, your sisters, everyone that Jesus lives, the victory is won. We have repentance and forgiveness in his name. And you don't need to worry at what the world will say when you tell them. For Christ has given you the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, to give you all the words that are necessary. That Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. May the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.